This podcast provides a platform that will share many different points of views that should empower you, uplift you, make you want to go out and do right. When you hear the term still a man, say, yes, I am. Still a man. Yes, I am. Still a man. Yes, I am. Let's go. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Still a Man podcast. Tonight's topic is stress kills, so that you should have some coping skills. So we're going to talk about stress and how it affects everyone's body, mind, and spirit. But before we get started, I just want to go over a few house rules. So Guys, you want to mute your phones. If you're not participating, if you're not speaking, you want to turn your mics off. You want to try to refrain from any sidebar discussions. Uh, Turn your TVs down, your radios. Um, Also, we need to refrain from too much obscene language and obscene body language and behavior. So let's be mindful. This is being recorded and it's being posted. So the whole world is watching. So let's give a good account of ourselves. Now let's get to the show. So tonight we're going to talk about stress. Um, I, but before we get started, I want to share a video with you guys so that everybody is on the same page as to what stress is. So let's watch this video. What are stress warning signs? There are a variety of signals that indicate when you are under stress. When you learn to recognize them, you can take action. If you have physical symptoms, they might show up as trouble sleeping or headaches, heartburn or stomach ache tight neck or shoulders, racing heart, maybe grinding your teeth. If you have emotional symptoms, you might notice nervousness or anger, loneliness, sadness, feeling pressured, or feeling bored. When you have behavioral symptoms, you might notice excessive drinking or eating, smoking, watching TV, playing video games, gum chewing, being critical of others, or trouble getting things done. And when you have cognitive symptoms, You might feel forgetful, have brain fog, a loss of sense of humor, or trouble making decisions. Most people have more than just one symptom, and many find that their symptoms cluster under one or two categories. It might be helpful to think about your symptoms and what categories they fall into. Okay, so let's get right to it. Stress. So let me just give you guys the medical definition of stress. So stress, medical or biological, in the medical or biological content, uh, context, I should say, it is the mental, the physical, emotional factors that cause bodily or mental tension. So let's be mindful of that. And as stated in that video, a lot of us have stress and we're not even mindful of it. We don't even know how to deal with the stress because we don't know what the stress factors are, what our triggers are. So we usually just ignore it or try to do so. So some signs they say are when people start to sweat. You know, you become anxious. Uh, Your eyes are dilated. They look like they're bulging out of your head. Uh, You feel like that you're having a heart, your heart rate speeds up and things of that nature. So those are some things that we should probably uh, pay attention to. And a lot of times you have tightening of the limbs. You either clench your fists 
or some people uh, biting their nails or they'll cross their legs and hold them real tight. Or sometimes people will grind their teeth. These are all signs. So let's talk about uh, some different types of stress. So better yet, let's get you guys opinion on what stress is and how it affects your life. Okay, can we do a roll call so we know who's in the house tonight? Good evening, you got Josie in the house. Elizabeth is here. Hi, Aisha's here. G. Lace in the building. Okay, so I believe we have Timmy and Robert is here as well, but they may be having uh, some mic issues. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let's start with uh, Aisha. You wanna tell us what uh, stress means to you? What stress means to me, um, and, and especially with the last few years of my life, stress has been at an all-time high and has been coming across in many different ways. And I haven't even, again, like you said, known that it's been a factor of what's been happening to me when I am stressed out and noticing more and more. And I, you would want to blame it on all types of other stuff, but you know, when the stress kicks in. So I've been noticing that um, just with losing my son, I even had eyesight issues type of thing and my vision is getting worse and worse type of thing and I know that started right at that time and over the years the stress has caused chest pains hair okay. loss weight issues all types of stuff um and I've been just battling back and forth trying to stay healthy get healthy recognize what's going on and try to do something about it but Stress, everyday stress is still there too, living day to day, bills, mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. um, your job, mm -hmm. just the everyday stress is just still there and then still try to overcome that other stress too. So what it means to me is a lot. It's all a part of me and I, I don't know when it's ever going to let up. That's just what I'm even stressed about. When is okay. that ever going to let up? So, All right. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Timmy, we're gonna go to you next and then we're gonna go to Josie. Then we're gonna go to Elizabeth and then we're gonna go to Elijah. Then we're gonna go to Maria and then we're gonna go to Gregory and Robert. So Timmy. Yeah, well, I, I don't know because I, I try not to stress about things, especially things I have no control over. I don't need, I stress about things that, that is, uh, you know, that I can control, I have control over. But as far as stressing about things, you know, I, I, I adapt. I adapt to the situation, so you know I I don't I don't think I stress about too much things because I adapt to things as I go along. So I really don't you know stress about things that I have no control over. Never. Okay. Um, I believe I said uh, who's next? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yeah. Elizabeth, you uh, ready? Yeah. I'll share. But I was supposed to go after Josie, but that's cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll go after you. <laughs> okay. Um, for me, every day is stressful, you know, working in a hospital environment. My stress causes me to have headaches and mm. I am always tired and sleepy. So usually I'm sleeping by seven, eight o'clock. 
and I do smoke a lot more. You know, I have a lot of stuff with all my kids and everything, you know, having my kids being in the service and being black men, I'm always scared, you know, they're going to be on the front lines, mm -hmm. sending them to war and everything, you know, plus I'm um, going through the divorce process and it's just stressful when you know they're lying and you can't even tell them you're lying mm -hmm. and everything. So it's just a whole bunch and, you know, with my kids, my work, everything. But I usually just mostly... I smoke and I sleep a lot. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Josie, you wanted to go next? Just for me um, is some of what both uh, Elizabeth and uh, Pringle has shared. Um, definitely about the children. Um, you know, just a typical go out for my son is a typical stay up all night long, stressing, worrying, wondering, you know, is it going to be a decent night? Is it going to be a, a humble night? Is it going to be a return home night? That's stressful. Stress for me is going to work and trying to give your all and not feeling worthy or appreciated. Um, stress for me around work is also, you know, laying in the right comfort zone, you know, some place that you feel belong. Um, stress for me is health, wealth, um, you know, and family, you know, family stresses sometimes for me, um, making sure that their health and their, their well-being is at, at the right place or you know, knowing I don't have control over these things and, you know, to piggyback off of what Timmy said, um, I, I, I try to practice my life every day with, you know, please don't stress yourself about things you do not have control over, you know, focus on the things that you are able to change. Um, however, I mean, it's, it's a good saying, but I'm glad Timmy's able to live by that. Me, however, I just find it hard because it still it still brings me around. You know, mom's sick. How can I help to make her better? Stressing over something that I can't control. You know what I mean? Um, it's just certain things. But stress is not healthy. It it, it doesn't make me feel good. Um, it gives me those symptoms that Elizabeth was talking about. Feeling tired. Um, Aisha, chest pains, um, <laughs> just recently coming to, you know, I guess acceptance that I need to go see the eye doctor, you know, it's, it's a lot. So, but, you know, and I don't know if that has a lot to do with getting older, because um, when I was much younger, I would definitely practice and operate off of Timmy's statement. And it didn't bother me as much. I mean, I used to go to doctor's appointments. They used to be like, your blood pressure is excellent. Oh, my God. Da, 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 da. Now I go to the doctors and it's like, hmm. So, yeah, stress to me has changed me, you know. And losing my nephew has definitely put a, a, a piece of stress in my life that, you know, I've experienced deaths before. But that one is just, it's a different type of mm. death for me. Yeah, to sure. But that's what I want to share about stress and my levels. Okay, we're going to go to Elijah next and then Maria. Okay, um, <clears throat> stress. Yeah, we all be stressed. Um, I feel like this, right? To me, man, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too annoyed, I'm too anointed to be disappointed. All I do is win, man. When it comes to me, I got to have my mind on whatever happens, happens. And I learned that when my mom died in 97, you know what I'm saying to you, that you can't stop when situations happen, you know what I'm saying to you, you have to have faith to go through and see how the outcome's going to be. Or if someone else is going through something, all you got to do is just, you know, pray for them. I believe that if I put my mind in that mindset of stressing, <clears throat> I'll stop putting myself in a low vibration. And when I put myself in a low vibration, a lot of negative stuff come my way. You know what I'm saying to you? So I feel like when things is to be either about bills 
relationships, you know what I'm saying to you, or jobs, whatever, truck driver, you know, you stress out on that. I, I keep myself on, yo, thank God you live to see this day. It's mad people who's not here to see this day. It's just a journey, you know what I'm saying? And that's what keeps me in trouble with it, because I don't want to go down that road with my grave. And I love to read that beautiful book called The Bible that helps me out tremendously, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of tools I use to make sure I'm getting that vibration for that one at the end of the day, like Tim. Whatever happens is going to happen. You know what I mean? It was already great. I can't stop. It can't change it. I'm not going to get gray hairs and chest pains all the way like I used to or take medications like that. I'm not going to do that no more. I'm just, just going to be happy that I'm live to see this day. Even if it is stressful, I'm still alive. And that's what keeps me on a high vibration. Thank you. Uh, Maria? Yes. Now, what was the question? The question is, what is stress to you? What's stressful in your life? Every day is a stressful thing for me. I got grandkids. I got my son. I've been stressed out since Jamal turned 13 years old. Worrying about his everyday lifestyle. Worrying if he's going to make it home. Worrying if the cops are going to arrest him for the nonsense or whatever. Now I got these grandkids and I'm just worried about their safety all the time. When I go to bed, it's like a movie playing in my head, just stress, thinking about everything between my mother, my siblings, like stressful. I, um, I got anxiety because I stress so much. There's things that I can't control and then there's some things I can't control, but it just stressed me out. I'm honestly stressed right now. I had to go buy a new TV. Mm. Mm. I felt that. Sounds like a lot. Okay. Uh, Gregory, you want to share? <clears throat> well, judging from what that lady said on the video earlier, I guess I'm, I must really be stressed out because most of the things that she said I really enjoy doing. I'm watching TV. I probably indulge in a little marijuana here and there. I'll have a sip of night a nightcap. So I guess I'm really stressed out if I if I think about it that way. When she was saying everything in the video, it related to to things going on in my life. So but it's past somewhat years, I feel like everything's been a little more stressful than usual because it happened in like a chain reaction. We had a whole lot of deaths and I don't really get to see my kids like that. So I, I be having a lot of stuff on my mind at times. And I feel like sometimes when somebody says something to me or they're trying to say something to me, I might lash out because I'm feeling a little stressed, stressed and I don't really express it like that, but I do practicing meditation sometimes and I read I, I also draw so I try to release the stress mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's good um, Robert sorry <sighs> this whole topic kind of saddens me just listening to my family and the stress level that they have it becomes stressful for me I was literally over here almost crying because I know y'all pain runs deep I'm stressed out every day but I try to make a way to find happiness I'm working through my son's legacy every single day no matter what it is I try to find joy in what I do these people upstairs over my head, they're stressful. I can't get sleep. I'm trying to move. I try to keep weight on. I lost a lot of weight since I lost my son, and I'm fighting to put weight back on. I'm just trying to survive in this world that God had me living in. I know that he has a plan, and I believe in his plan. I'm going to push on through. These stress levels that I'm having and I see my family members having, I took on a lot of their pain, which became stress for me. 
I want my moms to be okay in life. I want my daughter to live a life that is going to be beneficial to her in a safe way possible. I want all my nephews to be able to go where they desire to go without having to worry about danger looming. So when you talk about stress levels, I had a high level of stress that I try to calm it down because I know by me being stressed like I was and still continue to be on some days, I can end up having a heart attack. I can have a stroke and my helping other people won't be a factor anymore. So I'm just blessed to keep on trying to push through so I can be there for my loved ones and myself. So that's my stress level. Okay. Um, Tanasia? Yeah. Uh, my stress levels right now, I think all of ours are pretty similar. Um, I think it just varies on like age group and kind of like what you've been through. I think my personal stress has been, um, I think it's almost linked to expectations uh, with my family. Like, am I supposed to be a nurse? Am I supposed to be opening this business? Um, my journey <clears throat> on entrepreneurship. Uh, I think my journey with having my loved ones stabbed by somebody that we loved, that was stressful. And that process of him being on the run and, um, making sure that he's prosecuted correctly and trying to move on with life and move on with not hearing that phone call anymore, like anymore in your head that, you know, excruciating scream and all of that. Uh, and just like I said, your own expectations, you know, am I going to be able to do this, whether it's a business or, you know, when you get awarded something, I think that can be stressful. Sometimes, you know, the good can even be stressful, uh, you know, I feel like sometimes, like, for instance, with the grant money that I received for my business, yeah, it was a great time, and it's really rewarding, but that's stressful. Like, okay, what do I have to make sure to do with it? What do I do with it? Uh, I want people to be proud of me. Uh, I want to be able to help everybody, too. Uh, I want to spread all these great things, and I want a nonprofit, and all these things that we want, you know, stresses us out, stresses us out on top of our family members, what they're going through. So those have been my personal stresses though lately. Did I miss anyone? Okay. Um, so everyone had a chance to share what their stresses are. So again, I commend you guys for sharing because to acknowledge that there is an issue. Once you um, acknowledge that, then you could try to identify what it is and then we can start dealing with it. So I will say this to everybody in attendance, God gives you what you can handle. And I pray that he continues to shelter all of us from the pending storms. But you guys, I just want to tell you, everybody's strong. You know, the fact that you're still here, the fact that you're still pushing forward, um, and that you are mindful of what's going on around you and how these stress triggers or stress factors are affecting both you and others. So let's talk about um, some of the different types of stress. So there is a stress that's called acute stress. And this is how your body immediately responds to the stress. So it comes on fast, but it doesn't last long. It's momentarily. So a lot of times, those stress factors might consist of relationships. So it might turn into an argument and now you're stressed out because of what was said, what was done during this situation. Um, some of the, I'll say, stress management 
skills or strategies that they suggest are uh, breathing, uh, light meditation, um, learning to relax, uncross your legs, untighten your, unclench your, your fists. Because a lot of times we, we do that and we're not even aware that we're, we're clenching, that our, that our fists are balled up and stuff like that. We're always in uh, fight mode. And a lot of times these stresses, they trigger our uh, fight or flight, uh, you know, process. Uh, it's, it's either, you know, so you, you either stay in the battle or you flee from it. So that's something to keep in mind. So um, I believe a number of you guys talked about how relationships can be stressful. Um, some said about their relationships with their children. Some said relationships with their uh, mates, neighbors, uh, colleagues, might be your boss, um, might be a, a past uh, relationship, might be things haunting you from the past, might be things that has happened to you, like uh, death. You know, so grief brings about a lot of stress. That comes in several different stages. So now that's what we do with that. So um, let's talk about relationships that um, bring about stress. So a lot of times, um, again, your mate might bring about a certain level of stress. Now, the level of stress that you have and how long it lasts, if it turns into uh, chronic, goes from acute to chronic, that depends on you, that individual, and how you handle the situation. So you guys need to notice too, there are environmental factors, there are financial factors, and those things also uh, play a big part in um, how your stress level is. So, Somebody, uh, let's go to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, let's talk about, um, I think you some some stresses that you're having due to uh, divorce. You want to share? Yeah, so I even today I had to go to court thinking it was going to be finally over. You know, sign the papers, let's just get this over and done with this. But also, you know, I was having like mixed feelings yesterday because even though I wasn't with my husband no more it was just the point like damn I never thought I would divorce get a divorce you know it was supposed to be forever but even though I was happy it was happening it was still that sad factor that it was and the thing that stressed me out the most is him lying and having my kids lie saying so many different untruths that it's like, how could you like even put my kids through this? Like, this is between me and you. Don't put them in it and have them lie at that. So for me, that just stressed me out that I actually came home throwing up all day this morning and this afternoon and everything. So I had to lay down for a minute went and spent some time with my grandson because that always makes me feel better. Like he he always turns my day all around. I could yes. be in the worst mood, depressed mood, no matter. He just says, I love you. And that's it. I am in high hopes. I'm in heaven now. I could deal with anything you throw at my way. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can verify that too, Elizabeth, because you know, when my when my great nephew come over, he's just a happy little kid, boy. And, and if I'm if I'm not in a good mood with something, he come around, he, he you forget everything when he's mm -hmm. around because he'll make you laugh real quick. Just so by them I, smiling. I, yes, yes. Or it was just by them having you know, playing, having a good time, you watching them, you like, wow. You know, it just distracts you from what was on your mind, period. 
Yeah, it's so funny because my grandson, I taught him how to say I love you in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So he makes sure he tells me when he's going off to school, mm -hmm. uh, te quiero, mi amor. So he mm -hmm. says, I love you, my love. He comes, he gives me a big hug, and he says it to me again. He says, abrazo, which means a hug. And he's like, best off to give him a kiss. And he just makes my world. It's beautiful. Yes. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, tonight we're talking about stress and how stress affects all of us. Uh, Bird, <laughs> you ready to share? I'm ready, man. Uh, all right. I mean, me, I believe stress has at some point taken control of my life at some point and has affected my health, um, my well-being, and possibly even the safety for others. You know, I've been put in some tough situations and stress has taken its toll on my health, um, you know, lack of care, self-care, lack of care for others. Um, but I'm in the process now of just trying to figure a lot of things out, moving forward, um, allowing my health to be a priority and not allowing others to influence the, um, the outcome of my health. The outcome of my health is basically going to be all on me mm -hmm. and not allowing others to cause influence or have say um, to cause that type of stress. And also for me trying to clean out you know, do some cleaning to figure out people in my life that are causing stress to eliminate that factor. So I'm doing a little stress cleaning right now in my life and, you know, Xing out things that are, you know, causing a lot of stress and, you know, my children and all of this other stuff that's going on. So I'm in the process of cleaning out this stress closet. I decided that medication um, is not the option for me to manage myself. It would be me and maybe a little, you know, can I buy for men can help. But other than that, it's going to be me figuring things out. Okay. Um, so let's talk about some ways, and I'm going to come back to others. Let's talk about some uh, strategies that they suggest for acute stress. So as we say, we talked about breathing exercises, and that's something that you can do anywhere, anytime. Um, that's that's yoga. good. For that's yoga, yoga too. Mm -hmm. Well, we're talking about quick ones that you can even do in the workplace, in the car, and things of that nature. Um, another one, it, it, like I said, it, it works. It works rather quickly. So that's something that you would you want to. Practice. Uh, uh, the, the, the Chinese balls. The Chinese balls and helps release stress too. You take the Chinese balls and you roll them in your hand, yeah, release some of that I stress. Have, I have one you of want those. to roll balls in your hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, you guys, um, let's go to the next one. Let's talk about cognitive reframing. So, this is when we, we say things a certain way. And for example, a lot of times we say, oh, I hate my job. Oh, I, I don't, I don't want to go there. I hate going there. Um, I, I don't want to do this. And they, Quit. They, they say, if you uh, change how you word it, um, I guess you can say, um, I'm going to go to work so that um, I can pay my bills. Um, look at it that way, as opposed to you have to be there. Or look at it this way. I'm going to work because if I don't go to work, I don't get paid. If I don't get paid, I can't pay my bills. I can't buy food. I can't pay my rent. I can't buy clothing. So that's, that's something else that they uh, suggest. Cognitive reframing. Hey, Dave. Yep, go ahead. Hey, that's basically mantra, kid. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So you say positive things to yourself over and over and change the way you're thinking. You know what I'm saying? So you use that yep. whole philosophy, you know what I'm saying? To your Greek philosophy. 
But it's all mm-hmm. starts with your words, man. You change your words, you change your mindset. It took me like seven years to get in that mindset. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody stresses. That's just an <clears throat> when we got systems, we're gonna have stress. If you gotta eat, you're gonna have to have stress. How you get over it, I believe it's words. I really do. And you know, play in nature. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's 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 right to the point, and that is uh very it, it's helpful to everybody. So again, uh, thanks for sharing. Uh, another one what they suggest is meditate, and I believe someone uh alluded to this earlier about meditating. Now, uh, I don't think that you can partake in a full. Medit- uh, meditation session within the workplace or in the car, not driving, um, you could probably meditate for a certain amount of time within your workspace if you have your own office. Um, Want to be uh, in an in a area where it's, it's private and you can have some peace of mind with the beyond prying eyes. Outside of the prior eyes, I should say. You, that's something else they suggest. You know, another thing I, that helps me is an upbeat song that that usually, like, if I'm down or whatever, an upbeat song always brings me back up. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you know, <laughs> and, and you know, without I, I would also give me peace and and. and tranquility is when we go camping you know because all of our life we spent our life out in in after all for for most of our lives so going out there was peaceful and uh, it was a big stress relief from the city life you know and so when when, when we got back home from our two month stay out in after all, it was like I can deal with this, 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 you know, the city life. I can deal back. I had my vacation. I had two months of peace and quiet and stuff like that. And I had no worry. And come back here, I can deal with that. Yeah, I agree. Like when I go on vacation, it'd be relaxing. And then sometimes on my way back, I get a little bit sad because I know I'm about to come back to the reality to deal with everything else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, hold that memory, though. Hold that memory when you had on that vacation. That can sustain. Hold that memory. That's a beautiful thing. Hold that vibration. So, again, guys, Another one, or last on the list for them, they're referring to like uh, progressive muscle uh, relaxation. So remember when we talked about the clenching of your fists and crossing your legs, uncrossing your legs and stuff. This is stuff that you can do when you're at work. Put your hands uh, by your side, you know, uh, so that you're in a relaxed, uh, you know, state of mind and body, you know, everything is not all bunched up, tied up, knotted up. Get a massage, blood. a massage could, would do that. Definitely, definitely, definitely that. Um, so again, that is, let's reflect, um, let's reflect, let's recap. The acute stress is how your body immediate responds to stress. And again, some of the things that they suggest to help you is light breathing, uh, muscle relaxation, uh, as Elijah stated, uh, mantras, uh, things of that nature, and uh, meditating, and all of those things should help you, and then you can get right back to dealing with our life. Because remember, the acute stress it's momentarily, it doesn't last forever. It comes on quick, but it suddenly, it subsides as sudden as it came. As long as you have certain anti-stress uh, factors. Okay, so let's talk about uh, chronic stress. Chronic stress is worse. 
you guys, this is long term. And this is the stress that a lot of us, we have problems identifying or we're in denial. Oh, I don't have stress. But meanwhile, this is what I was referring to in the topic uh, title when it says stress kills. These things are eating away at your body. Uh, this, this chronic stress brings about issues with your digestive system, your GI. Uh, it brings about problems with your heart. Uh, it can bring on like panic attacks, and things like that nature. It can cause problems with your, with your thinking, um, you, your memory, you know, your breathing. So these are things that you need to be mindful of because these are the things that take us out real quick. So um, uh, let's go to... Tanasia, Tanasia, you have said something about um, your family, I believe. What was you, um, you, was, you were sharing with us about stresses pertaining to uh, dealing with family? Yeah, I had a situation where um, I had two of my family members get stabbed by... Um, another family member and had to be airlifted and so I think that definitely when we talk about like certain things that haunt you in the past that's definitely a stress or how stress can turn into other things but for me personally I think the best thing that helps me with all of my stress is just working out like I feel like if I get up in the morning and having a routine if I get up in the morning and I have my routine going I know that I have my coffee or I brush my teeth I do this I have my coffee uh, I put on my clothes, I go work out, or I have this YouTube channel that I love. Uh, I go, I do my steps, I work out with her, or I go to Franklin Park because I enjoy being outside. Vitamin D is good for everybody, the sun. So um, yeah, definitely. I think being outside, seeing the birds, seeing the trees, meditation, prayer, and just knowing that you're here. Um, I also think just focusing too on my businesses, even though that can be stressful, but it can also be, I mean, my podcast about mindfulness, that's definitely um, been one of my things, you know, and when I say a thing, it's been one of my coping things. Like I, I do truly enjoy it. It's almost like poetry and rhythm to me almost. And it's like a mantra. Like we said, a lot of mantras really do help, which is actually a Buddhist thing, you know, when they, or hums, when you go, mm, Mm -hmm. and you just think oh, about yeah, yeah. Chance yep, and stuff yep. like that yeah chance yep and just telling yourself every day um i can't remember who it is but i I'll, I'll let you guys know maybe next week or on thursday if you guys tune in but there's um a mantra that one of these football players uh he has and it's awesome like he has one about health hey i am healthy today i am in good spirits today um he has one about motivation like, I am great today. I know I can accomplish everything I can. I am in harmony with myself and others. So that definitely works. Mm -hmm. But getting on that treadmill or, or taking that two miles, like today I was stressed out. I was like, you know what, before this podcast, it is 545. I can make it to Franklin Park. I can do my two miles. I put my, um, my chest, what is it, the chest weights? I guess, mm -hmm. that, yeah, it's like the vest and it has weights on it, I put that on, and then whether I'm jogging or I'm walking, either way, I'm sweating, it feels great, I could put music on, I could listen to whatever music I want, you know, and you can look at the mm -hmm. trees, the birds, other people, that's another thing, seeing other people, and I'm saying, hey, or hi, how you doing, or good workout, you know, you see different people, well, you go girl, you know, so that's great too, you get to experience other people on your journey. Mm -hmm. Um. Aisha, you want to, um, now that you know the definition of uh, acute stress and now chronic stress, which is the long-term stress, can you identify any chronic uh, stress triggers in, in your life currently? Given with me, um, and I, in I can't say it more than enough, that same old trigger with me, with stress. Um, 
And that's just the top. It's just the top. I, I feel like that's just the most and everything under that I can kind of cope with. Like it'll stress me out, but I know either I can control it or not. But that right there is just the most top stressful. So that is like acute when it comes. It's chronic because it's just long term. So it's, it's both. And that's just that one situation. So you, um, you, so are there any triggers within the workplace? It has been, it has been, you know, I don't want to touch too much on, on that, but, um, it, it has been within the workplace and because I've been there for so long and he's mm -hmm. always been, you know, that I'm 16 years there. So Ooh, yeah, that's all. It's just a given. Okay. Um, Josie, can you identify some chronic stress triggers in your life? I guess it would just be my son and, you know, work. Mm. So why is it that um, your, your work place, because those are environmental factors. So let's talk about that. What are the environmental factors? What, what is it in the workplace that makes it stressful and it's continuous? What is it? Can you like talk? The, like the sense of belonging, you know, and... Um, I'm an energy person, so if the energy just doesn't connect, then I have to reconnect, you know? It's not that I want to jump from here to there, here to there, because we all know that the longer you stay, like my sister said, she got how many years? 16. 16. Hmm. So with 16 years, that, that goes a long way. You know what I mean? So no matter where she goes or no matter what next step she takes, they're going to look at that and they're going to be like, wow, well, why are you leaving? It's not that she wants to leave. I, I would think that it would be because she wants to explore different options or maybe there's something at that time that's making her warrant to leave. You know, um, you say like, you know, I, I guess when I heard it from you, David, it sounds as if it was an ongoing thing. So mm -hmm. for me, I'm never going to settle for less. I'm never going to sit there and continue to be stressed when I know I can move on and do something that would be more of a blessing to me than, you know, because I put a lot forth for what I put out when I go to work every day. It's not like I just get up in the morning and be like, let me go and put in my eight hours and come home. Nah. That's not like that. I, you know, I run programs. I, I look after other people's loved ones. And look, you're talking about stress. That's stressful. You know, it's a lot to, you know, take on to even begin to look after someone else's loved ones. It's like reports, judgment, care, mm -hmm. attention. Medical, you know, so medical. Think about, think about all of that. It's, it's, it's a lot to take on. So, no, it's not that I want to continue to leave and get up and find someplace new to work because that's crazy. But um, I want to find a place that I feel like I belong, some place that I feel like I can settle down. You know, I had jobs where I had long years involved, but you know, now it's just, it's a new time. It's a new day. It's like everyone knows that there's something more out there for you. So if you're sitting still and you're settling, then that's not a good, that, that's stressful. You know, that's stressful right there. You know, I didn't want to leave my last job that I, you know, left. However, stress caused me to get up and want to do something better, you know? And I like to say like where I am now, for right now, I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. This is this is this is great, guys. We're gonna keep this going. Um, let me go ahead and give you guys uh, uh, one of the strategies that they suggest for long-term stress. So they say that we should develop healthy relationships, supportive relationships. Uh, I guess relationships pertaining to positive. Uh, so that would probably relate or consist of uh, some cognitive reframing, uh, change the way we think about the situation, even if it's environmental. 
Uh, in most cases, I suggest to people, we find out how much of this situation pertains to me and how much of this pertains to the workplace. Because once we target that, then we can deal with that. You can have tunnel vision at that point. You can just pinpoint it and I can deal that, deal with that one thing at a time. All right, let's see what else they suggest. Um, they also suggest that you guys enlist or enroll into some online uh, support groups. I don't know. I guess we can say that the Still a Man podcast is a support group in a sense because we have uh, circle discussions and it's a peer support group in a sense. So this could be very therapeutic to almost. And that brings me to the next thing. They also suggested you seek out uh, therapy so that you have someone to talk to about this long-term uh, stress because it's not healthy again. And a lot of times, let's recap, long-term stress leads to a lot of uh, disease, ailment, uh, heart disease, uh, gastro uh, issues. Um, it also leads to anxiety. It's, it's a number of things, uh, memory loss. It's, it's, it's not good. It's not good at all. And it makes us very like, uh, we have less tolerance when going through um, these things. Um, I wanna go ahead and ask, Bird, can you identify some long-term uh, stress triggers in the workplace or in your life? Um, is Bird still with us? Okay, he might be having a mic yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, okay. mic check one, two. I've learned over a long period of time about work stress and how um, to manage and how unhealthy. And so I haven't really, you know, maybe just dealing with like short staff issues, but it's not a stress factor for me anymore. That's just part of the game. You know, I guess for me, this is my second run. Mm -hmm. um, this is my second run in the game, in the big game. So I learned a lot from the first game, you know, got put on the bench for a little while. I'm back in the starting position, you know. So it's just coming with a lot more experience to learn how not to let those things affect you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, personal stress triggers is sometimes people, man, you know. I guess I got to be spoken to a certain way for me to respond a certain way. I don't know, man. It, it all comes down to, you know, you get what you give from me. You know, I try to give my mm -hmm. best and you treat me like poo-poo, then, you know, we may have an issue. So, yeah, that those are things that really trigger me. But, you know, more workplace triggers that induce stress. I'm in a point now. I'm in an amazing place at work. Um, I'm not worried, man. I got no worries, no troubles. I'm doing all right. I'm just trying to build a franchise team. Got them jobs. Hit me up. Um, but, you know, we all right. B's all right in a good place at work. No stress. No worries. And, 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 and that is all due to God. So thank God that Amen. you are in a better place in life. And you heard what the gentleman said. He has opportunities for those seeking employment. So um, if need to, you guys should reach out to him so that, um, you know, maybe those work employment opportunities will bring about the necessary change in your life. Um, some yeah. other things they talked about can help you uh, to deal with long-term stress is exercise, healthy eating, like change your diet, um, listen to music and also reading. So that is one of, I, I, I strongly suggest that everybody partake in some type of exercise. Um, at least a couple of times out the week, 
probably uh, anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Get that blood flowing. Get it pump, Get that heart pumping. You know, sometimes you need uh, an outlet. You need to release. So some people might take up self-defense. Uh, they might do boxing. They might do kickboxing. Some people might do mixed martial arts. Uh, they might be weightlifting. Might be riding a bike. Might be swimming. Might be walking. Might be running. But uh, let's 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 get the heart pumping. You know, let's let's give ourselves uh, a fighting chance. No pun intended. Uh, I want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone on the podcast that is um, involved in therapy and? How do they feel it, you know, is helping them or not helping them? Good question. I was in, I was in is there I anybody was that, that, I'm sorry, I, I can't, turn, turn, your, turn your mic up a little bit so I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Yeah, I was involved in therapy. I was involved in therapy from 1998 until 2003, you know what I mean? Medication, therapy, group meetings, the whole nine. I was diagnosed with a mental illness, IED, intimate explosive. Back in the days, we used to call it anger management. And I ain't gonna lie to you, therapy works up to this day. If I ever feel a little bit too, as we call stress means anxiety, the anger kick in, which is substitute for the stress and all that stuff. And I just go to a group meeting and we talk. Or I talk to my fellas, but I think I, like they say, I think that's very, very helpful. Go to a therapist, excuse me, go to a psychiatrist, no, therapist, yeah, go to a therapist and um, to a group meeting with y'all doing right, what we're doing right now. I think that's great. I did it for a long time and it helped. It helped. Only thing I didn't like about when I first got into, I was biased. This is in the nineties, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm, from, I'm from the hood. I ain't, I ain't know nothing about this, but I was, I had to do it after my mom died and, um, how they pick your brain. <laughs> and I had the little thing that you can do the x-ray stuff. It can tell you what's going on in your brain with what part is. And that part was like freaky to me. You know what I mean? And um, back in those days, I didn't have a lot of support. There wasn't a lot of support back then. But now I advise anybody, especially if you're a, a person of color, if there's a therapist or whatever, I mean, excuse me, yeah, therapist, man, go talk to that person because they will help tremendously. They helped me out a lot. Help me out. A lot. I don't. I don't believe in the medication no more. But um, yeah, help me out a lot. I I I love how candid you guys are being. You know, honest that you guys are. Uh, uh, you're you're allowing yourself to evolve and get to a point where you do not mind sharing you know, on this open forum. I really appreciate that. It, it, it makes this worth doing. I've always said uh, helping others is therapeutic to me. And for others, they might feel the same. Uh, doing it in a formal, informal, anytime you get a chance to help somebody, it's a great thing. Um, anytime that someone can offer you assistance and support you uh, through your trials and tribulations, that's a great thing. But I want to recap. So again, guys, let's talk about this, this long-term uh, stress. Be mindful. It can affect your eating, your sleeping, it can make you lose weight. It can make you have performance issues in the bedroom when dealing on with sex. Because if you're not feeling healthy mentally, you don't want to be touched. And you don't, you don't have um, an urge for sexual pleasure. So let's keep that in mind too, guys, because it can bring about uh, some uh, penile dysfunction. So let's talk about it before the women start talking about us. You know, so let's keep that in mind. Uh, you guys, this, uh, I, I can't. I can't even find the words. This is it's beautiful that we can come together and we can share like this. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys about a few things. So you can partake in some aromatherapy, exercise, 
uh, therapy. Uh, you can get together and start a, a book club so that that way you'll have a peer group and it can open up the uh, this discussion about what's going on. Sometimes a good book opens people up and now people want to share. Sometimes they can relate to the stories that they're reading, you know, or uh, vacation. Sometimes you might need to take a vacation. I understood that one of my brothers uh, just journeyed along and uh, share, if you want to share, Bird, tell us how that experience was. Shaba. <laughs> Yo, I just, you know, <laughs> I think it was just a real change in my life. You know, I just turned 50 years old. Um, you know, I don't live on the fly. I don't just live on the whim. Everything's, you know, with a plan, everything, something. It's just never on the fly. And I made a decision, you know, to kind of just do some self-care. Like, I really needed some time mm -hmm. to get away and... It was an amazing act I did. You know, God's blessed me enough to be able to afford it, to be able to have the time at work to just take it and go. And I just took it and went and I really put myself in a place, you know, just of peace, you know, that I, I just, I don't think I've ever had. Um, so it was an amazing eye opener. It's enlightened me to make many more journeys, you know, in, in realm of self-care for myself. I think I spent my whole life taking care of other people mm. and you know the reflection on who takes care of me um came up empty so i think me is taking care of me and so when you came a, okay. when you came okay. back did you feel refreshed ready to take on the world ready to jump in and um swim um actually no i didn't take it to come back refreshed for anything um, I took it to put my mind in a better place. I'm kind of still where I am, don't get me wrong, but I did something for myself that I haven't done and I can't tell you when, and that was just something for me, you know? That's um, <laughs> am I back refreshed and ready to take on the world? Hell no, I'm back ready to fall back and relax and let the world go on and just let me, you know, let me float. You know, I'm not trying to swim to the front. I'm not trying to win no race. I'm trying to just hang in the crowd and finish the race. Whenever sounds like I do, you did. I do. Sounds like you did um some self reflection during your vacation. Without a doubt, a lot of self reflection because it was just me by myself, nobody to talk to. Um, you're in your hotel or you're on the beach or you're on the boardwalk or wherever I am. I'm really by myself, so it was a lot of internal things going on. You had the roosters. <laughs> so I would say this to you guys again. I didn't hear somebody said something. I didn't hear that. Uh, we need to be aware of our triggers and how they affect us. You know, it's helpful. I would say it's best to first line of defense uh, in our world. If you have any faith, arm yourself with prayer. God is your first line of defense. You know, that is the ultimate therapy. God listens. And when no one else wants to hear you, God listens and he hears you. Uncle D, by the way, I didn't hear anybody say this, but music is really therapeutic. If you're trying to end, drawing is therapeutic too, if you're trying to relieve some stress. Even if you're scribbling on a paper and you're getting out some anger. Elizabeth and, said that. Elizabeth yes, said that, that music. Um, let me say this to you. Know, I think that Mary J. Blige is definitely a stress believer. What? Mm -hmm. Gorgeous? <laughs> That's what I always go to. <laughs> Let me say this to you guys too. There's a there's there's it's 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 not it's rarely used anymore, seldom used um anymore, but I would suggest everyone get yourself a notebook or get yourself a computer and create a journal. And every day, uh, try to write down a passage, what happened during your day, how your day started, how your day ended. You know, uh, create some goals and, and write out your objectives. You know, give yourself 
uh, some uh, time uh, uh, in which you plan on accomplishing these things, you know, because we need to get have a plan. Like, it sounds <laughs> like I'm at work. <laughs> well, 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 you know what? Life is work. You, you want know? me to create an individual support plan for myself. Yes, and that, and, and sometimes we have to treat it's better than work like, though, because it's for you. That's right. That's the You're ultimate right. work. You're, You're right. working on yourself. Sometimes we have to become our very own case study, you know. And it's it's best to start with yourself because again, you can't help no one else if you can't help yourself. You can't take care of no one else if you don't take care of yourself. Sure. Hey, Dave. Can I say something? Yes. Quick? Go ahead. To me, another thing that really helps me out, kid, is I had to know how to change my ways of talking about myself or my situation. That took mad years, dog. I had to learn how to use positive words. Because I learned when I use negative words. Really App, I think you're too far away from the, the microphone or something, big dog. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. All right. Like I was saying. <clears throat> words. Oh, to me, you always go back to the words. Every time I used to say negative words about myself or situation, negative situation was happening, conundrum, effect, whatever you want to call it. But when I started using these words, I do a lot of reading. Think of Grow Rich, World's Greatest Salesman, all that stuff. Do a lot of reading. And when I heard, when I got the key that it was your words, you know what I'm saying to you, that started changing my vibration. That circumstance is still there, but yeah, I would know how to go through them because I learned how to use my words. And that's when I start seeing better opportunity and situations. So for me, I always think it's about words. I know a lot of people goes in the thoughts process and they're always thinking first, but to me, it's always about your words. And that's what helped me out a lot. And you know what? That's, that's a beautiful thing. And I'm going to piggyback on this before I take us out. So you guys, uh, be mindful of who you are, what your situation is. Um, Learn how to use your words, ask for help. That's what we tell children, use your words. So as adults, we need to practice the same, uh, you know, type of uh, methods, strategies and stuff. If, you, if you're dealing with something, ask for help. You know, there's services out there that are available and waiting for you to reach out for the services. But the program doesn't work unless you work the program. Uh, also, you guys, before we go, I just want to give people a chance to plug some of their uh, businesses. Tanasia, you want to tell everybody what you do? Yes. So I have a podcast called Shine by Mabukai. And that is a podcast mm -hmm. all about mindfulness and wellness when it comes to both men and women and children. I also have mm -hmm. um, Mabukai, which is a wellness we're going to launch Mabukai Black soon for the men, hopefully next year. But it's all about things that make you feel good. Um, my mm -hmm. ladies, it's all about your, your silk, how you feel. It's about your facial mask. Take your time to put on your jade roller, which is your favorite uh, serum that we have. It's really about taking time for yourself. Run that bath. Put some rose petals in your bath. You know, mm -hmm. the boxes and the self-care boxes include that. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I also have baby which is everything that has to do with your baby, mommy and baby, daddy and baby, you know, how to build that wellness and that relationship with your children and overall self-care. Okay. Positivity. That's what we like. Gregory, you want to tell people about your new endeavor? Yeah, I'm going to be back next Thursday with another Think About It Thursday. We're going to talk about Rachel Dozol, I don't know if you heard of her, but there's a documentary on Netflix right now on her called Rachel Divided. You should watch it. If uh, um, and we're gonna talk about, and we're gonna you, talk about to, cultural you, appro appropriation, basically. Okay, and nephew, we're, we're, you talking about you talking about the young lady who pretend, who pretend to be black? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Guys, save it, save it, save it for save it for think about it Thursday. Uh, there's a Gregory. documentary on Netflix. Please watch it if you're gonna tune in on Thursday next week. Uh, okay, tell everybody where um they can find Think About It Thursday. What platform? You're gonna find it on the Still a Man platform. So you're gonna see us on Facebook. Probably Instagram soon and YouTube. What time is this show? 
This show starts at 7, and it's going to end at 7.30. Okay. Robbie, you want to share with everybody about your new endeavor? Robert, you want to tell everybody about your new endeavor? Okay, he might be having mic problems. So let's just uh, go ahead and tell everybody about... Uh, Gregory, you want to tell them about uh, Wind Down Wednesday? So tomorrow, Uncle Rob is going to be participating in a Wind Down Wednesday, something that you can... Wind down your feelings too. If you're all hyped up, we want you to wind down and be in comfort. That's L. I like that. That's L. Okay. Um, anybody else have some uh current or future endeavors they want to share with the group before we um log out? Elijah, Bird, Josie, Elizabeth, Maria. I got a podcast coming out so called Keep It Straight. Okay, where can we find this? It's being developed. It's all about everything you're feeling, but just keep it straight. Everything okay. you're feeling, just keep it straight. Okay, so everybody stay tuned. Elijah's got a new exciting um, endeavor. Everybody make sure that you support. Uh, Elizabeth, you got anything to share? Um, no, I don't. Hello, could you guys hear me? We can hear you now, Robert. You want to tell us? Sorry. I want to I want to take the helm. Um, I thought you guys can hear me. I'm a proud owner of Adopter Paris clothing line, where you can find Envy Forever Adopter Paris Ladies First um, on EmporiumPlus.org. You can That's also cool. see some of my latest fashion on Adopter Paris Facebook page. You can also tune in for my Wind Down Wednesdays segment on Stellar Man platform which that might happen next Wednesday, not this Wednesday. It's just to give you something to think about as in feel good, motivate you to wind your Wednesday down, calm your nerves, um, learn a little bit of meditation tips or self-love or something, and recognize you for once. Awesome. Beautiful. Awesome. Beautiful. Yo, Robert, this is beautiful, man. It is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Adapt or perish. That is beautiful. Okay, so again, Robbie, you want to tell people what else they can find in Emporium Plus? You can you can find still a man clothing. You can find youth serums clothing, and all of those latest fashions should make you feel good or look good. And you forgot to tell us about Vision Picture Your Future. You and oh, I. Oh, Vision, Vision, Vision is my nonprofit that I share with Aisha, Mrs. Pringle. Um, we are proud owners of that non-profit <laughs> organization. We aim to help children picture their future. Okay. All right. We'll and you guys, we'll you stay tuned. We got we, a lot of uh, new um, Okay, let me tomorrow. answer that question. Let me answer that question real quick. We offer um, programs which consist of driver's education, music and fashion education, outreach programs. We deal with the disabilities. We help um, youth with advocacy. We also um, pay for college students book vouchers and um, we help them find jobs and we do a lot um, and, and in affiliation with youth serum. My man, so you did, that was a mouthful, but you got it all out. So let me just say this to everybody and take you out with a prayer. God, please keep us all safe and shelter us all from any pending storms. Uh, please come into each and every one of us and remove anything and everything that is unlike you and replace it with everything that is you and draw us all closer to you. Guys, let me just leave you guys with this. Either you ignore it or you endure it. To ignore it means you don't deal with it at all and that will limit some of your stress. To endure it means you're taking on everything that comes with it and that will enhance your stress until next time this has been the still a man podcast god bless you all good night good night good night